Hi everyone, welcome to video lecture number six. In this video lecture, I'm gonna walk through just a few of the research tools uh, that you might find useful as you do the research components of project three and project four for EH101. Um, so I'll spend just a few minutes talking about each of these tools. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say here. I just wanna draw your attention to a few things that you might, work, that you might find useful as you plan um, how to complete uh, our current project, project three, and then our next project, project four. So as you can see, we're starting on the UAH library website. The URL for that up here is uah.edu forward slash library. Uh, once you get to the library webpage, you can see you know, some links to a number of different tools, different kinds of information. Uh, there's a few things that I think uh, you will find useful. Um, one would be just the main search function of the library website uh, here under the name OneSearch. Uh, you can search for whatever your key research terms are in this field. Uh, <clears throat> so, for example, um, if we're working on Project 3, the definition argument, you might try searching for your main term here. So a number of you, for example, are working on the topic of equality. So if you wanted to look up equality in the library OneSearch, you can see here uh, the kinds of um, resources that you would end up getting, right? So there's a lot of different uh, hits, right? Up here it says we found, oh, we found, you know, nearly, you know, 2.3 million uh, search hits for this term. So obviously it's important to narrow down these sources a bit. And you would do that by using the tools over here um, on the left-hand side of the screen. You could, for example, mark your search to only bring up scholarly peer-reviewed journals, right? So clicking on that, you can see, okay, so some of the search results that we had previously have vanished because we're no longer looking for sources of those types. We could change publication dates. So let's say here that maybe we only wanted to look for sources published since 1980. Okay, <clears throat> so we get a further refinement of our search results. Maybe we want to, uh, you know, uh, we want to take off peer-reviewed journals here. But coming down here, we want to play with the source type. So maybe when we want to look at academic journals. Uh, and then we also want to look at, let's say, magazines. Okay, so you can see some of the uh, different, um, the different, uh, you know, sources that come up here have changed a little bit. Um, and then you can see also the kinds of information that you get. You get the author's name, you get some publication information. Uh, you get some information here telling you if the, uh, doc the, the, the document in question is available uh, in full text. It tells you what kind of source it is, a periodical, academic journal, etc. So if you start by using that one search tool on the library homepage, um, I would encourage you to use uh, the tools available to you <clears throat> to refine those search results a little bit. Um, also through the library homepage, a couple of other tools that I'd like to call your attention to. Um, one is accessible by um, opening up this little sidebar here in the Get Help option. Uh, it brings up the list of subject guides. These are resources compiled by library staff <clears throat> of resources specific to um, various kinds of disciplines, to various uh, kinds of topics, research areas, etc. Um, so I'm going to click over here to buy subjects. You can get some sense of the breadth of these subject guides. So you can see now that we're looking at this by subject, the various kinds of um, uh, subject areas, dis uh, disciplinary areas, etc., that these are organized around. For the work in our course, you will probably uh, be most interested in either arts, humanities, and social sciences, or down here in social science. So, for example, I'm going to click this link, and then you can see um, the further kind of subdivision of some of these subject guides. You'll notice also that some of these subject guides are affiliated with particular courses. There's a specific subject guide, for example, for EH 101, Freshman Composition. So clicking that link takes you to a list of uh, materials specific to the work that students often do in EH 101. There's some information here about finding definition, citation document, documentation, how to find books, databases that you might start from, and that's what we're looking at over on this side here. 
So don't be afraid to use those subject guides. They're there for your use. They're there to make the research process a little bit easier to manage. One other library-based tool that I think you'll find useful um, <coughs> is uh, under, sorry, it's under books and articles here, is the all databases link. Once you click on that, um, it takes you to this page where you can select among different kinds of databases to search from. When you do the one search that we looked at a few moments ago, you get search results from across all of these databases, which is great. It's a very broad search, um, but sometimes you want a more narrowly targeted and more narrowly focused search, in which case you could come over uh, to this page, library databases page, and then search, as you can see here, kind of clicking through the page for different kinds of databases that might be useful as you plan what kinds of materials you want to look for as part of your research agenda. So as you can see, there's a lot of different resources available just through the UAH library website. Um, it might also be useful to think about including in your research plans, though, some other kinds of tools. And in particular, I want to call attention to this Google Scholar tool. Uh, if you've not used Google Scholar previously, it's, an, uh, it's a kind of an archive, a database that Google has put together that uh, primarily tracks citations across different fields of scholarly research. Uh, and what that means is that it'll bring up a listing for some particular scholarly article, and then it'll show you the number of other articles that have cited that one first article. So Google Scholar is a very good tool for maybe trying to figure out what other authors or what other articles are involved in one common discussion. Uh, so I'm going to search here for Amy Wan, who is a writing studies scholar who works on questions of citizenship. Because let's say I want to write about citizenship, but I want to know who else is writing about citizenship. So I need to know what other scholars are addressing this topic. So having searched for Amy Wan, I get, you know, this list of uh, results. And the article in particular that I'm looking for is this one right here, In the Name of Citizenship, The Writing Classroom, and The Promise of Citizenship. And you can see you have a few different options here, right, for each of these sources. Um, for our purposes, I think the Cited By tool is probably the most useful. When you click on this, you get a list of all of the other sources that have cited the uh, source that you started from. So as you see here, there's a number of different um, sources that have been published since uh, this, uh, since the initial publication of Amy Wan's article that cite her work. So if I wanted to see how other scholars have used Amy Wan's work, all I would have to do uh, would be to search for uh, this article and then track all of the different citations to Amy Wan's work. So like I said, this is a particularly powerful tool when maybe you find some article or book that you're especially interested in. Maybe you want to know more about how that discussion has developed. Google Scholar is a very powerful tool for doing that kind of work. All right, so I just want to focus on a couple more sources um, as I wrap this video up. <clears throat> uh, these two sources are not ones that I personally use a lot. And that's not to disparage them, just to say that I'm not as familiar with them as some of the other sources I've linked to. But students have reported finding these resources valuable. The first is ERIC, the Institute of Education Sciences. Uh, the URL for that is right up here, eric.ed.gov. Um, and this searches various kinds of education databases for materials related to um, you know, different kinds of topics. So again, I'm going to use citizenship as the basis for my search here. So I'm searching in Eric's database, and you can see, again, a number of different kinds of sources have come up here. Um, here you can get, you know, various kinds um, of links, right, to various sources. This confirms whether various articles are peer-reviewed. Um, and again, links to these sources. You have different ways of uh, clarifying your search type over here. So a lot of powerful resources here. You can change publication date, et cetera. Um, so Eric uh, could be a very powerful tool as you plan your research. And then same thing here, the Virtual Learning Resources Center. Uh, as the name says on the front page, uh, indexes thousands of the best academic information, websites, et cetera. Again, are you citizenship as my term? Uh, and so here we go. 
Right, so you get down here and then you get some, you know, uh, various, maybe kind of more contemporary news, um, uh, news and current events type sources. Again, you can kind of change various sorts of, um, you know, various sorts of search terms, etc. So yeah, still a lot of powerful resources available to you here. Okay, so I'm going to start wrapping up this video. Uh, thanks again for listening. Uh, there's a lot of research tools available. I've only barely scratched the surface in this particular video, but um, I think the, the research tools that I've highlighted here are the ones that you know students have the easiest access to. Um, and, um, and, you know, I think you will find plenty of powerful resources within these tools. The one thing I would like to close uh, by saying is, you know, that I obviously encourage you to make use of these research tools. Starting with just kind of a basic Google search, you know, is fine for kind of getting some ideas about the kinds of information that's out there. But as you get more and more familiar with doing academic research, you can get more and more familiar with the expectations of academic research. I think you'll find that the kinds of sources that you have access to through the Salmon Library, through a tool like Google, uh, through a tool like Google Scholar or through Eric, etc., um, are much more in line with the kinds of sources that instructors um, and professors will ask you to use. So I think it's a you know, perfectly good strategy to get accustomed to using these tools early in your academic research and writing career. Um, and they fit well with the kinds of work that we're doing in Project 3 and Project 4. So thanks for listening. I'll be back soon with more video lectures and video updates. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via email or through the course Q&A uh, page in the discussion boards on Canvas. Thanks very much, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.